Greetings to everyone. This is Lali G and welcome back to our channel, the Billing Subulation Methods Series. To all accredited BOM teachers all over the country and to those couples who would like to learn the method, I would like to invite you to like and subscribe to our channel and also click our notification bell. So for today, we are in episode 9, but I would like to invite you to watch all previous episodes so that you will gain mastery of the method. Episode 9, we will talk about the ovarian hormones. That will be the main point of discussion for today. So this is episode 9. Again, the title would be Using the Slide Rule to Teach the Two Ovarian Hormones. The two ovarian hormones are hormones estrogen and progesterone. So let's start immediately with our discussion. According to Drs. John and Evelyn Billings, estrogen and progesterone are both low during menstrual bleeding. This is the period wherein there is no ovarian activity. But there are some cases wherein during the days of menstruation, there is an early ovulation. No? So with that, estrogen might be high in those days wherein there are ovarian activity during menstruation. But most of the time, during the days na meron pong regla, ang estrogen and progesterone po ay parehong mababa. During this time, cervix is open. Now, ano po ang mangyayari after tinatawag natin menstruation. But, but before that, let us try to check the actual chart. Ito po yung actual chart. If you look at the actual chart, days 1 to 5, these are the days of menstrual bleeding. And of course, if you have the menstrual bleeding, take note that both estrogen and progesterone will be at low levels. Now, what will happen after menstruation? Immediately after menstruation, the cervix will be closed. No? Again, there will be no ovarian activity. During the days of BIP, katulad po ng menstruation, both estrogen and progesterone, again, will be very low. So that would be BIP o ang mga tuyong panahon pagkatapos po ng regla. Now, where is the BIP days during uh, in this particular chart? No? Ito po ay nasa day 6 hanggang day 10. Okay? So simula day 6 hanggang day 10, ang hormones, estrogen, and progesterone are both low. So here po yan, that would be for BIP. Now, kailan po umang tumataas ang hormone estrogen? Estrogen begins to rise in the first appearance of mucus. Ang tawag po dyan ay ER. ER means estrogen rise. No? There is an ovarian activity. And then because of that, the ovaries now will release the hormone estrogen. Tatandaan po yan natin. Sa unang araw kung makikita nyo ang mucus secretion, that is a signal na tataas ang inyong estrogen. So, ER will take place no, from the first appearance of mucus secretion. That would be estrogen rise. No? At yung estrogen po ay patuloy na aakyat until it reaches the highest point. Pag narating niya po yung highest point, what will happen? Ang mucus po ay magiging slippery. No? The reason behind mucus turn into a slippery sensation mula sa sticky sensation, kaya po nagbago, it is because of the rising amount of estrogen. Again, when estrogen reaches its highest point, ang mucus secretion po ay magkakaroon ng slippery sensation. At yung last day of slippery sensation, ang tinatawag po natin peak day, ang araw po ng, ng ovulation. Okay? So yan po ang estrogen. From the beginning of the appearance of the mucus, gradually tataas ang estrogen hanggang highest point. 
making the mucus secretion now slippery in terms of sensation. Sa chart po, makikita nyo, ang estrogen rise ay nagsimula sa day 11. And it continues to rise until what? Until the 15th no? to 16th. No? Pataas siya gradually. At habang tumataas siya, nagbabago po ang sensational mucus mula sa sticky. Pataas, magiging wet. Pataas pa, magiging slippery sensation. So days 11 to 12, ito po yung developing pattern of mucus. Mula sticky, going to slippery. Bakit? Because there is a gradual increase or rise of estrogen. Okay? Now, pagdating po ng peak day, ang araw ng ovulation, ang estrogen po ay bababa, no? There will be a sudden drop of estrogen during the day of ovulation. At ito po ay usually nangyayari sa peak day. Sa pagbagsak po ng estrogen, a new hormone will commence. So during the peak day, ang araw ng ovulation, tataas naman ang progesterone. Ang tawag natin dito ay PC, progesterone change. No? So progesterone begins to rise at the day of peak day or the day of ovulation. At ito ay patuloy na tataas sa luteal phase. Pero bago matapos ang 11 to 16 days ng luteal phase, babagsak na rin po ang progesterone together with estrogen. Balikan po natin ang estrogen. Estrogen begins to drop doon po sa araw ng peak day. Ngunit muli siya aakyat. Estrogen will rise again sa ikatlong araw ng luteal phase. At sa buong luteal phase, nandiyan po mataas ang both estrogen and progesterone. Pero sila ay babagsak no? within the, the span no? ng 11 to 16 days. So bago ng 11 to 16 days, take note that both estrogen and progesterone will gradually drop. No? So let us have a, what, no? a quick preview ng estrogen at saka progesterone sa buong chart. No? Yung nakikita niyo pong blue line that represent the estrogen. Yung orange line sa baba, yan naman po ang representation ng tinatawag nating progesterone. Kung titignan niyo po yung blue line, yung estrogen, yung estrogen po ay mababa during the days of menstrual bleeding and BIP. So from day 1 to day 11, mababa po ang estrogen. The first rise of estrogen nangyari po nung day 12. Tignan niyo po, day 12, no? Because of the appearance of the first mucus. Yaan ang tinatawag nating ER. Nagsimula po sa day 12, no? So day 12 to day 18, there is a gradual increase of hormone estrogen. Now, bakit? Kasi during the time, ang ovaries are very active. No? Merong ovarian activity. Merong tinatawag natin rapid growth of the follicle towards maturity. Okay? At nasaan po dito ang day of ovulation? Nasa 18, no? peak day. The peak day is also the day of ovulation dito sa ating chart. At saan nangyayari ang pinakamataas na concentration ng estrogen sa katawan ng isang babae? It is happening before the day of ovulation. Tingnan niyo po yung day of ovulation, 18. Nasaan ang pinakamataas na estrogen? 17. Day 17, why? Because ang pinakamataas na estrogen concentration ay nangyayari before ovulation, no? the day before ovulation. Pagdating ng ovulation, gaya po ng sinabi ko kanina, estrogen drops. Nakita niyo, bumagsak siya. And it will rise again on the third day of the luteal phase. Now, tingnan natin ang progesterone, the orange line. No? During the days of menstruation, low. During the days of BIP, low. At during the days of mucus. So mababa siya from day 1 
today 17. Tignan niyo mabuti. During the days of mucus, mababa siya hanggang 17. Progesterone begins to rise on the day of ovulation. Yang peak day. Tignan niyo 18. Umakot na siya and it will go higher. But what will happen? Both estrogen and progesterone will gradually drop. No? Pagdating ng 11 to 16 days ng luteal phase. No? Pagbagsak nilang dalawa, either from 11 or to the 16th day of the luteal phase, yun ang tinatawag nating end of the luteal phase, darating na ang menstruation and the beginning of a new cycle. Okay? So that is the luteal phase at meron siyang habang 11 to 16 days Mataas dyan ang progesterone and also estrogen but gradually drops, no? Bago mag-11 to 16 days. At pag sila ay nag-drop ng sabay, it means tapos na ang luteal and a new cycle now will commence. So this is the normal pattern, no? The normal pattern. Ano ba ang normal pattern? If we will check, so ang normal pattern ay yan, na ang estrogen ay umaakyat sa unang appearance ng mucus at ang estrogen dapat makarating sa final or the highest point para ang mucus maging slippery sensation. No? Kapag hindi, then there will be no slippery, no ovulation. At pag merong peak day, merong ovulation, progesterone na will begin to rise. No? This is the movement of the ovarian hormones no? in the different phases of the cycle. Now, let's try to check this particular slide no? or presentation. Okay? Tandaan natin na ang, the total number of days no? from the beginning of mucus hanggang sa end ng luteal phase, approximately 21 days. No? And then look at the the luteal phase, 11 to 16 days. But take note of this one. No? The BIP, including the menstruation, mababa po ang estrogen together with the progesterone. Now, try to look at this particular sample chart. No? Let us try to check the hormones. The one in blue, the line, no? in blue line, is for the estrogen. And the orange is referring to what? Progesterone. Look at days 1 to 7. Dry. Mababa ang estrogen, mababa ang progesterone. Pagdating ng day 8, nagkaroon ng mucus secretion. Tumaas ang estrogen. But the estrogen did not, no? Did not reach the highest point. Kaya hindi nagkaroon ng tinatawag natin slippery. Pagdating ng 9, bumagsak uli yung estrogen because it's dry. So 9 to 12, dry. Low estrogen, low progesterone. Then suddenly, on the 13th day, nagkaroon na naman uli ng mucus. Kaya umakit uli yung estrogen, hanggang 14. Pero the, mu uh, the, the estrogen did not reach the highest point. Bumagsak siya on day 15, resulting to dry days hanggang 19. At pagdating ng 20, nagkaroon uli ng mucus, tumaas uli ang estrogen. But look, hindi nagbago yung mucus, always sticky hindi narating ng estrogen yung highest point. Kaya yung mucus, always sticky, hindi naging slippery. At pagdating ng 26, nag-drop. Okay? Look at the progesterone, hindi tumaas. There is no rise of progesterone. Why? Because there is no peak. Anong nangyari sa hormone estrogen and progesterone? Both of them did not normally function. Kaya pag hindi nila nararating yung kanilang highest point, no? especially for estrogen, hindi narating yung highest point, no slippery, no peak, no ovulation. At pag walang ovulation, ang progesterone din hindi tataas. Ang tawag natin dito is hormonal imbalance. No? If you have a hormonal imbalance, it means darating ang estrogen but the estrogen will not reach its highest point. At pag hindi niya narating, ang mucus hindi magde-develop from a sticky to wet ending with a slippery sensation. At kung hindi mag-e-end sa slippery, no peak, the progesterone will be stagnant, parating mababa. 
it will not rise because progesterone will only rise if there is an ovulation. Ito po ay isang sample ng irregular cycle. Irregular cycle is a result of hormonal imbalance. Kung kayo po ay approaching menopausal, meron ng edad, or nagbe-breastfeeding, ito pong chart na to ay normal for you. But kung wala kayo dun sa dalawa at you experience mucus not developing into a, into a wet, leading to a slippery sensation, it is a sign of hormonal imbalance. No? Kapag ito ay paulit-ulit nangyayari and within six months, parati kayong ganito, it requires medical attention. So that is the importance of teaching hormones to couples so that they will be able to understand the importance of mucus secretion starting from a sticky sensation, developing into a wet sensation, ending into a slippery sensation. This developing pattern is a result of what? Of healthy hormones, no? Estrogen reaching the highest point and progesterone being released during the time of ovulation. So now, you understand the hormones using the slide rule. In short, progesterone and estrogen very low no? during the days of bleeding. Sa BIP, mababa din ang estrogen at saka progesterone. Pag nagkaroon na ng mucus, that is the first time natataas ang estrogen leading to the highest point making the mucus slippery in sensation. Kapag nagkaroon ng peak, Tataas naman ang progesterone during the peak day sa araw ng ovulation. Babagsak ang estrogen pero aakyat ulit sa ikatlong araw ng luteal phase. At both estrogen and progesterone will be high in the luteal phase but gradually no, it will drop bago dumating ng 11 to 16 days no, ng luteal phase. Pag bumagsak na yung dalawa, that is the end of the luteal and the beginning of a new cycle. Yan po ang ovarian hormones in relation to the slide rule. No? I hope you're able to understand no? sa ating mga accredited BOM teachers at doon sa gustong matutunan ang Billings Ovulation Method of Natural Family Planning discovered and developed by Drs. John and Evelyn Billings. No? Kung meron po kayong tanong, please message me sa YouTube. Uh, pwede rin po kayong mag-email at tignan po ang ating website no? para malaman niyo po yung mga tinatawag natin teacher training courses in the future. No? If you want to become an accredited teacher of the Billings Ovulation Method. Again, please, no? I would like to invite you to like and subscribe to our channel and also click our notification bell. So this is episode 9. So goodbye and see you next episode.